Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing traffic engineering series. In the last episode, we were doing some of the hands-on around involving PCE. And one of the constraint that we had talked earlier uh, was related with SRLG. So before we really go ahead and understand the SRLG or simply sometime called as SRLG protection, uh, it became very important or necessary for us to understand this particular concept. So this video might be a little longer than some of the other episode and it will be primarily around the theoretical concept. And later on, we will go ahead and do some on hands on around uh, this particular topic or, you know, the area. But yeah, I would, you know, we need to really understand this topic again. You know, you can find these slides again on segment routing.net. Thanks to these guys again. So we'll go ahead and explore what is topology independent LFA. LFA uh, simply stands for loop free alternates. So before we really deep dive into the TI LFA, which is simply again known as topology independent LFA and again LFA stands for loop free alternate. So before the segment routing was, you know, really came into the picture or was introduced, simply doing, you know, IP based FRR. So FRR stands for what fast reroutes and your LFAs, which are simply known as loop free alternate or some people also call them classic LFAs. And these technology was not so widely deployed, you know, they were there. Okay. And that was some of the things nowadays. And another important thing to keep in mind that when we talked about the old type of these things or the classic LFA, those were completely dependent on the topology of the network. And there were certain situations where we may, where there was a problem, you know, finding an alternate loop free path in the topology. And on top of that, it was primarily dependent on the network topology. When this FRR technique, you know, combined with the segment routing, we could achieve a very fast conversions time. And that's why you see the title, it says sub 50 millisecond. And this, if you think about this LFA is all about the protection, you know, you are trying to protect your traffic. It is all about, you know, protection. So now the whole idea is, okay, hey, we are trying to protect our link. That means we can go ahead and protect our link. We can go ahead and also protect our node also. There is another thing that we need to keep in mind that TILFA, it is, you know, primarily IGP automated. So that makes it very simple to understand as well as to deploy. And we do not need any special type of routing protocol or any other extra protocol to manage any of these things which are related with TILFA. And again, the main advantage when we have a loop free alternate path, we can go ahead and achieve a backup path less than like 50 millisecond or something. That's what we're going to go ahead and explore in this particular episode. So stay with me again, you know, you can go ahead and read about these in more detail by downloading this particular PDF. I'll try to go ahead and, you know, give you some detail which are really needed before we go ahead and jump into the next concept. So let's start with that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at segment routing topology independent LFA. So let's go ahead and scroll down and let's take a look at what do we have here. So there are a couple of things. Let's go ahead and scroll down introduction. So yeah, let's, let's quickly talk about the classic loop free alternate. So again, LFA stands for loop free alternate and FRR stands for fast reroute. So now we are talking about the classic. That means, okay, that's something pre-existed. So it is per prefix based LFA. It is simple, automatic, local, sub 50, sub 50 millisecond fast readout technique. Okay. It is again, IGP pre-computes a path per primary path per IGP destination. That means we have per path IP optimality. The backup path is pre-installed in the data plane. And when upon a local failure, all the backup path of the impacted destination are enabled in a prefix independent manner. So that's the whole idea. So now let's go ahead and understand that with the help of our uh, topology. Sorry, let me go ahead and make it small again. So in this case, there are a couple of nodes. So if you see the node one is acting as our source and we have two potential destination. Destination number one, which is node five and destination number two, which is node eight. So initially, when all of these things are the policies are designed, let's say the system went ahead and picked up this particular path, node one going via node two, node three to reach node five, which is our destination one. To reach the node eight, which is our destination two, system took node one, two, three, and eight. 
So if you see in this particular case, both of our policies or both of our routes are using uh, two and three as the nodes initially. So now when we introduce the concept of loop free or LFA, loop free alternate, what are we trying to do? Okay, hey, in case if anything happens to have to our primary path, in this case, the path, let's look at the very first path, which is to destination one. It is via node one, two, three, and five. If anything happens to our this path, what is our alternate in this topology? And not just the alternate, we want to stress on the word loop that we want to have another path which is loop free. That means we do not want to be going through a node that where it can go ahead and potentially create a loop. So that is the whole idea that we are trying to create different alternate path which are loop free. And we are doing this is very quickly in less than 50 milliseconds. That's the reason it is just simply called also as fast readout. So now the system went ahead and calculated two potential loop free path. For our first path, it says, okay, if there is a failure between node and three, then we will not be able to reach either of our destination because three is the one which is connected to both our node five and node eight in case if the communication between node two and three goes down. So for very first path, the loop free alternate path that was calculated or the backup path, it says, okay, in case of the link between two and three happens to fail, the path will be one to two, two to four, four to three, and then from three to five. This will be our first backup path for our destination one. For destination two, we are saying one to two, two to six, six to seven, and seven to eight. That's what the slide deck here says, okay, hey, this is the initial path that was calculated initially. When the LFA was involved, we see this, we see this is the LFA path and post convergence that says, okay, if this failure happened to happen in the topology, what will be our post converged path for both of these particular paths that we see? And this is the whole idea, guys, that we want to, or the technology that we want to is simply to go ahead and protect. It is providing a protection to our link as well as to the node. And that's what is simply called as your TILFA or topology independent loop free alternate. But again, as we, I kind of briefly talked about when the whole thing started with the classic LFA, the one of the major problem that I felt okay here or that you will also read in the, this is it is topology dependent. And it was not always possible to provide most optimal backup path. And we will see, uh, you know, how the TILFA really went ahead and solved some of those challenges. So let's take a look at, you know, what it mean by not optimal backup path. So if you go ahead and uh, scroll down in this particular topology, in this topology, uh, there were two potential destinations. There's destination one and there's destination two. Initially, okay, hey, this is the path that was calculated for this one from node one to two, two to three, three to five. And again, let's say if the link between two, two and three happens to fail, then there were two potential thing that could happen. Hey, we can go to one to two, two to six and then six again has a connection back to two so it can always try to send the traffic back to two but again if that happens there is no way for two to reach to five because the connectivity with two and three is went down so that means what are we doing here the loop is getting created in this particular case and that is the whole idea okay hey we do not want any loop to be created that is why we cannot be taking six cannot send this traffic back to node Two and if that happens, it would go ahead and create a loop, and that's what this whole thing uh, talks about. So in this case, the alternate or the post convergence path would be one to two, two to six, six to seven, seven to your five. And again, no backup path in topology. Node two does not have an LFA for destination. So that's what it talks about. And again, now looking at the suboptimal backup path. So for the suboptimal backup path, if you take a look at in this topology that the default metric that is being assigned or configured is 10 for this side of the links while the links between let's say if you look at one to two uh, with the default metric is 100. Now initially the path that is again calculated denoted by this black line it says one to two, two to three, three to five this is our destination number one. With the classic LFA Classic LFA will go ahead and find the shortest path. You know, it will go ahead and say, okay, I will take one to two because the link failed between two to three. So I'll go to four. From four, it will come down to three, three to five. But there is a problem with this path. This is our suboptimal path because we have a better path with higher capacity link. But the classic LFA went ahead and picked up the suboptimal path. 
And this is not a problem when we talk about the TI LFA. That's what it just simply talks about here. In this case, if I go ahead and read the slide, that would it probably say the same thing. This backup path may not be planned for capacity, okay? It was just simply planned as, okay, hey, in case if something happens to the my, my core router. So in that case, that's what it says, the operator would prefer to use the post convergence path as FRR backup aligned with the regular IGP convergence and some of that area. And that's how this whole topology independent because it solves the two problem. The most important issue, that's what I said earlier, it is not dependent on a type of a topology. Because when you go ahead and look at some of the topology, there are possibility when you use the classic LFA, that system is not able to calculate the alternate path for all the destination. Like in this case, it was only able to figure out a, uh, a backup path for destination one, but not for destination two. And that's how the whole TI LFA came into the picture. So if you look at the most important, again, it talks about, okay, hey, there is 100% coverage and 50 millisecond link and node protection. So that means if there is a link failure, it will go ahead and protect that. It prevents transit consumption and suboptimal routing also. It is simple to operate and understand because it is automatically computed by IGP. We do not need anything different. And it is incremental deployment, also protects your LDP and IP traffic. We'll just simply uh, stick with the segment routing here. So TLFA uses post-convergence path. That's what we kind of have seen so far. And we also notice what is the suboptimal path. So now if you take a look at the example here, TLFA uses post-convergence path, optimally benefit example. So in the previous example, we saw, okay, hey, the in the case of this link failure, the classic LFA went ahead and picked up a higher metric path. That's what we notice in the classic LFA, node to switches all traffic destined to node 5 towards the edge node PE4. That was the case, which happens to be the low bandwidth link. And then edge nodes are used to protect the failure of a core. Now, that is the classic LFA does not respect this rule. So there was no such thing in the classic LFA to do that. And that is the reason node 2 now, when you use the TI LFA, node 2 switches all traffic destined to node 5 via high bandwidth core link. Again, we will see that some of these things during the hands-on. But that's the whole idea. Now, the TI LFA has all these benefits or, you know, extra things that the classic LFA was primarily missing. Now, if you go ahead and scroll down, there is simply a concept that I want you to remember for the time being. And again, you know, we'll go ahead and explore in more detail. So when we work with the TI LFA, generalize the name of nodes on the backup path. So there is something called a P node and there is something called a Q node. So P node are the node reached via prefix set. So that means a node that we can go ahead and reach with the help of our prefix set. And if you remember the prefix sets are the global set prefix, which are usually assigned to the loopbacks to the router to identify them into a topology. So those are also known as your P nodes, means a node which you can just simply reach with the help of your prefix set. But in our topology, we also had something called adjacency SIDs. These are the links between the two nodes. So that signifies, and again, this is only local significant to that particular router. So now the Q node. If you need to reach a Q node, the Q nodes are reachable only via adjacency SID. That means you would need to go to a router first. That's why these are the two things that you need to remember. P node, the nodes which are reachable via the prefix SID, and the Q node which are reachable via the adjacency SID. Now, there is a post-convergence path. Again, we said enforcing loop freeness, okay, on post-convergence path. That is the most important thing that we need to keep in mind, that the alternate path that is being figured out, it is loop free. 